Hello and welcome to Coveo Bite Size Learnings. Today's topic is the use of partial matching in Coveo queries. Coveo Bite Size Learnings are as short as they are sweet, so let's get started. Partial matching is a pretty straightforward concept. The idea is that when a user enters a query into the search box, do we require a match on every term in the query, or do we only need to match on part of it? In the Coveo environment, we can enable or disable this feature, and when it is enabled, there are a couple of configuration options to consider. Let's start with how things work without partial matching. In this context, in a given user query, every word is considered to be required, that is, unless stop words are enabled, in which case the system may be looking at a simplified version of the query, similar to what we see here. Taking that simplified query, we can make the logic explicit and show that the index will only match on documents which match on every and word and considered and required. In other words, any document which does not match on even one of those terms will be excluded. With partial matching turned on, the query is interpreted more liberally based on our configurations. The first configuration to consider is the query threshold, which is the number of terms which have to be present in order for partial matching to kick in. Until you hit that threshold, it's just as if partial matching is not turned on, so all terms are required below the query threshold. Or, to re-examine this query, the index looks at it logically as if it were all and required and below and query and threshold. The default query threshold is 5 when you turn on partial matching. Once the query threshold is met, the next configuration, the match threshold, is taken into account. So, for large queries with lots of terms, results need only contain enough terms from the query to meet the match threshold. The default for this setting is 50%. It can be changed to another percentage or it can be set to an absolute number of search terms. Given the search terms we are looking at and the default match threshold, this means that there are a wide variety of term combinations that documents can match in order to be included in the results list. For example, any document which matches the logical expansion results and need and contains and terms and query and match and threshold will be included as will need and only and match and query and enough and from and meet, as well as results and only and from and the and query and to and match. Although that last version contains terms which could be excluded as stop words or which, even if they are not excluded, are likely to be of such low importance that any documents matching other combinations will be much more highly ranked. Let's go ahead and take a look and see partial matching in action. We've indexed MIT's repository of the complete works of Shakespeare. This index contains each complete play as a separate document, as well as each scene broken out into separate documents and a few metadata pages for a total of 990 unique documents. The collection is rife with interesting and unique terms and phrases. At this time, partial matching is turned off, so let's get started with a familiar phrase. When I search for wherefore art thou, I have immediately reduced my total document count to 109 documents, which include all three terms. If I go a step further and add in Romeo, because all terms are required, my results total drops to three documents. As you can see, this predictably includes the full play of Romeo and Juliet, but it also includes not one, but two scenes. If we hover over the links, we can see that one of them is Act 2, Scene 2, and the other is Act 3, Scene 2. So if we go ahead and add in some additional terms to narrow our search further, we can do so. Because partial matching is turned off, all terms are required, and the only documents we get are the full play and the famous scene in Act 2. If we go into the quick view and jump to one of the terms, we can verify that we are finding exactly what we expect. Let's start over again with partial matching turned on. To do so, we can go into the editor. And since partial matching is an attribute of the search box, we select and edit that component in order to change its configurations. Let's go ahead and do our first round using just the default configurations. 
If we start again with our original three-word query, wherefore art thou, and even our second with Romeo added, we're still below the query threshold, and the results are the same as if we had partial matching turned off. However, if we extend our query further, that opens up a wide variety of additional matching combinations due to the partial matching settings, and so instead of just two results, we get 237. If we go back into the editor and choose a higher query and match threshold, then we see an immediate difference. In both cases, we still get the scene we want as the top result, but even with fairly strict constraints on the interpretation of the query, we get a fairly broad set of matches. If we go back in and set an absolute value of three terms for the matching threshold rather than a percentage, then the number of potential matching combinations against our large search term explodes, and we get a much wider variety of results. Although again, our top results are still those expected best matches. If we are not using the drag and drop editor, we can change this directly in the code as well. Just look for the Coveo search box component and either modify or add, if they are not there, the data enable partial match, data partial match keywords, and data partial match threshold attributes in order to respectively enable, set the query threshold, and set the match threshold. Here, I've set the match threshold to 30% from an absolute value of three. Since 30% of 11 rounds to three, we end up with the same effective results for this query. In some cases, we might want to do this sort of thing programmatically instead of via a static configuration. For example, we might want to have a checkbox or slider to expand a search or logic to resubmit a query with different options if no results are returned. In this case, what we will do is go into the code and add an event handler to insert our logic. In this case, I've used the done building query event, which is a good place to check the state of a checkbox or slider set by the user, or check a flag we may have set when the previous query returned per my suggested use cases. Since I'm not going to implement all the ancillary code here to support those use cases, I'll go ahead and comment out that if statement. The core of this is the dollar sum query extension, which I have configured to provide similar behavior to our default partial matching behavior with a match threshold of 50%. Although the best option matches against the most contextually valuable keywords rather than setting a strict query threshold. So as you can see, the results we receive are not identical. Although again, we do get our expected documents at the top of our new set of results. For more information about dollar sum and its options, as well as other powerful query extensions, please visit search.coveo.com and search for query extensions. On our standard query extensions page, you can find full documentation on this and related features. Thank you for watching this edition of Coveo Bite Size Learnings. Please share this with your team and subscribe to the Coveo Insights channel in order to keep your search implementation relevant.